Hello. Hello everyone. We've been in the most difficult time by coronavirus. We hope everyone is okay, staying healthy, and we hope this situation will be settled. And see you again at the dog show. And? And, um, <laughs> okay, so, um, we have been having a lot of the Jack Russell Terrier seminar uh, all over the world, including UK, Italy, Philippines, Japan, and many countries. But at this situation, by the coronavirus, we cannot travel anywhere. So we decided to having a Jack Russell Terrier lecture on the internet. Um, we have been working for the Jack Russell Terrier breed um, nearly 19 years. And we have won the three times world winner, uh, one time uh, Montgomery national winner, and um, we have been awarded the top breeder in the United Kingdom since 2017, 18, and 19. So we hope some, some piece of our knowledge would help for everybody to understand this breed. So we decided to have a seminar. The first, first chapter, breed standard chapter. And after that, Hiroshi will do the grooming lecture, trimming lecture on the second chapter. So we hope everybody enjoy it. Thank you. Thank you. Enjoy. Fit for function, the Jack Russell Terrier. The Jack Russell Terrier nowadays is one of the most popular breed in the Terrier group in the SGI country. But nowadays, uh, even in the UK, the Kennel Club, the Jack Russell Terrier entry number is growing and growing. So this is our point. While we have to stay at home and we have enough time, why don't you read the breed standard again? Sometimes we need to remind ourselves of the basics carefully, thinking about what job our breed was originally bred to do and analyzing the standard so that we remember why the physical construction of the breed is as the standard requires. Okay, so now we have lots of time because we have to stay home. We cannot go anywhere. So why don't you read and think about the breed standard in this time, which we have a lot of time. Let's read the breed standard, the Jack Russell Terrier. So before speaking about the Jack Russell Terrier breed standard, Okay, let's go back to the speaking about the anatomy. Canine anatomy must be our common language. So, when we have some seminar in some countries or some area in Japan, and I ask to the, my students, listeners, where is the withers? Everybody say point, different thing. I ask them, where is the buttocks? They point. Everybody pointed a different point. So, now, I gave to this seal to our Canary young people and then asked them, where is the withers? Hiroshi, is this okay or not? Yes, I think so, that's okay. Next. Where is the occiput? Correct? Yes, correct. So next, where is the root of the tail? Very close. Where 
is the shoulder point. Correct? Correct. Okay, where, this is very difficult. Where is the buttocks? Maybe he, Hiroshi can, can put it on. So, where is the elbow point? Yeah. Where is the path down? Okay, where is the stop? So these are the example, but on the Canadian anatomy, we have to have the common language, otherwise we cannot have the same cookie shape. So now we have the common language of the anatomy. So this time I would like to read the breed standard of FCI and Kennel Club KC. Almost the same, but sentence is a little bit dif different. And this time I would not speak about the breed history or the or the, the country of origin, or I, I will not speak about that. This time, I just want to speak about the breed standard. The brief historical summary. FCA breed standard of Jack Russell Terrier. Brief historical summary. The Jack Russell Terrier originated in England in the 80s due to the effort of the Reverend John Russell, Mr. John Russell. He developed the strain of fox terriers to suit his need for a dog to run with horses, to run with his fox hounds and go to ground to bolt the fox and other quarry from the dance. Two variety evolved with basically similar standards except for differences, mainly in height and proportions. The taller, more squarely built dog is now known as the person Terrier. And the shorter, slightly longer proportion do is known as the Jack Russell Terrier. The SGA breed standard of Jack Russell Terrier. General appearance, a strong, active, lean, working terrier of great character with flexible body of medium length. His smart movement matches his keen expression. The tail ducking is optional and the coat may be smooth, rough or broken. The important proportions, the important proportion on FCA breed standard is the overall dock is longer than high, rectangular. The depth of the body from the withers to the brisket should equal the length of foreleg from elbows to the ground. The girth behind the elbow, the girth behind the elbow should be about 40 to 43 centimeters. And the behavior and temperament. A lively, alert, and active terrier with a keen, intelligent expression. Bold and fierce. Friendly, but quietly confident. Uh, um, same part from the FCI. So the 
KC Breed Standard of Jacrassel Terrier says, general appearance, a strong, active, lead working terrier of great character with flexible body of medium length, smart movement, keen expression. The coat is predominantly white and maybe smooth, broken or rough. Skirts not be penalized. The characteristics, lively, alert and active, a good hunting terrier, sturdily built, that could go easily to the ground. Temperament, bold, fierce, friendly and confident. Okay, so from these two standards, almost the same as CI and KC. Important point. This breed should be should be should have flexible body of medium length, smart movement, keen expression. Jacrasser terrier are small size terrier, but not short legged terrier, not long legged. They should be medium. And smart movement. They are not a short-stepping, restricted mover. They have reach and drive and move smartly. They should have keen expression. They are not a cute breed. They must be keen and functional because they are working terrier. They are cute, yeah, but cuteness is not in the breed standard. So I will give you some examples good correct examples and wrong examples so that you can see the differences. Let's see. So I said this breed is not a short-legged terrier and not long-legged terrier. This breed should be a medium. I give you some examples of the real dogs. The first one, her name is Duffy. She has a beautiful head. Beautiful coat, such a beautiful character, uh, straight straight front leg, and she's an amazing mover, but she's a wrong proportion because she's too tall, um, she's too high, and uh, she's, she doesn't look medium. Her height is about uh, 30, uh, 37.5 centimeters. So 37, it's too tall. 37 point. Next. Point five. Okay, the next example, her name is Gelato. Um, she has a beautiful coat. She's a very strong dog, look like a really a good working terrier. But speaking about the proportion, she's wrong because she's too tall two long legs. She, does, she doesn't look a medium. Her taller is um, 34.5 centimeter. Almost 34 or 35. So this is wrong example. Okay, another example. Do you think this is correct? All wrong. She has a beautiful coat, gorgeous head expression, but I have to say she's wrong because she doesn't look medium. Her highest is 23 centimeters. 23 centimeters. And I will show you this breed can produce. Thirty-five, twenty-three, both in the same blood line. But we have to think about medium. Always, this is a medium length of terrier, not the short legged terrier, not a short legged terrier, not a long legged terrier. They should be medium. 
Okay, next example. His name is Yukio. He will be nine years old this June. This dog, let's see, he looks medium, medium balanced. He doesn't look too short leg. He doesn't look too long leg. He looks medium. Let's see. His uh, highest is 30, 30 centimeters. 30 centimeters. 30. 30. He doesn't look too tall. He doesn't look too short. Okay, let's go next. Okay, next example. His name is Gatsby. He's just turned one year old. He's still a young dog. But he has enough chest. And he doesn't look a long legged or short legged. So I can say he is a correct example. Let's see. His height is 29 centimeters. 29 centimeters. And he doesn't look a too, too long leg or too short leg. He look medium. And then he's a one year, one year old. So with age, his chest will more drop down. So he will look more medium with age. Okay, let's go next. All right, next example. Does he look too short in leg or does he look too long leg? No, he look medium. So I can say he look a medium, look, medium, medium balanced, correct example. Let's see. He's a nine, uh, 29 centimeters. 29 centimeters. And he has uh, enough length of body, so he look medium. Okay, let's see the girls. Okay, next. We have seen a couple of Boys, wrong examples and right examples. Let's see the girls. This is, her name is Miri Miri. She, she's gonna be two years old. Does she look too short in leg? Does she look too long in leg? I don't think so, she, she looks medium. And she doesn't have a too long leg. Let, let's see. Uh, highest is uh, 20, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 27, 27. centimeters. Which can be smaller than the male, but it doesn't mean which should be too short. Both dog and bitch should, should look medium. Let's see the next. So next example, she looks small. She does look small and she is small, but she doesn't have a short leg. She has enough leg. So I don't think she's a wrong example. She's a small, but she's a correct medium looking uh, terrier. Let's see her, how tall she is. Uh so highest is 25 centimeters. 25 centimeters. So, this female named Rana, she just turned one year old. She has a very correct proportion for the beach. She doesn't look a long, too long leg. She doesn't look a too short leg. She doesn't have a too long body. She doesn't have a too short body. She looked medium, very medium. And let's see how tall she is. Her, her highest is 27 centimeters. 27 centimeters. So I have shown you several uh, examples, too tall, too short, 
and these are the this is a dock 29.5 this is a beach 27 centimeters height and both of them looks medium so they should look medium not too short not too long so i've spoken about the general appearance general balance now i am going to speak the details the first head expression as andrew bray said the head expression is like a picture on the passport which dignify who you are. So the head expression is very, very important. Head, the FCA breed standard. Skull, the skull should be flat of moderate white, gradually decreasing in white to the eyes and tapering to a white muzzle. The head is broad between the ears. The head is broad between the ears. Apple head, apple head or domi head is unacceptable. The skull should be level, flat and well wide, widened. Stop, stop, well defined, but not over pronounced. The skull is flat. The stop is well defined, but never over pronounced. You can see frequently snipey, snipey head, and this is more notable in the smooth coat. And facial, re facial region nose, nose, back, muzzle, the length from the stop to the nose should be slightly shorter than from the stop to the occiput. Muzzle, muzzle is not narrow. Rip, tight, fitting, and pigment black. Jaws, teeth, very strong jaw, deep, wide, and powerful. Strong teeth, closing to a scissor spike. It's important to have a well-developed and strong underjaw because this is a working terrier. If they have a weak, thin underjaw, they cannot do the hunting. Cheek. The cheek muscle should be well-developed. This is very important. If the dog doesn't have a strong cheek, then the muzzle can be snipey. They should have, they should never look a cheeky look. Eyes, small, dark, with keen expression, must not be prominent or eyelids should be fit closely. The eyelids should be pigmented black and almond shaped. Ears, ears are very important because they are teddy breeds. Terrier breeds, most of them, the ear expression is very, very important. The ears, the bottom ear or dropped ear, good texture and great mobility. Elect or semi pricked ears must be strictly penalized. And also, the big, huge, houndish ears and low ear set are the biggest problem of recent years of the breed. They should be keen, small, and fit ear. Okay, the head and the head and the skull by the KC breed standard. The skull should be flat and moderate white, gradually decreasing in the white to the eyes and tapering to a strong muzzle. The stop is well defined and the cheek muscle are well developed. The length of muzzle from the stop to the nose should be slightly shorter than from the stop to the occiput. 
nose and lips black. Lips tight fitting. Lips black. Nose black. Eyes, almond shaped, very small and dark with key, keen expression. Not prominent. Closely fitting eyelids with black pigment. Ears, bottom or dropped carried close to the, the side of the scalp. Of good texture and great mobility. When they, when they listen something or when they focus on something, their ear moves a little bit higher or a little bit closer. The top of the ear, the top of the ear is level with or very slightly above, above over the scalp. The tip of the ear is in line with the eyes. Can you see it? And mouth, jaws, strong with a perfect regular and complete scissor spine. Upper teeth closely overlap lower teeth and set square to the jaws. Broken teeth or missing teeth due to work, work, hunting, are not to be penalized. So head proportion from the side. This is a rough coat, this is a smooth coat, but the proportion from the off spot to the stop and stop to the nose is same. Should be same. And same as the ear set. This is a smooth coat. This is a broken coat. The coat texture is different, but the head expression, head proportion should be the same. The flat skull, the small ears, strong muzzle, not too short muzzle, and strong cheek. The, in any coat, the head proportion should be very correct. So, we are going to show you many head examples with the real dogs. Let's see the dogs. So, I explained about the breed standard of the head expression. So now, we are going to see some example. Too long muzzle, too short muzzle, or too big ear, or too small ear. Let's see. The first one. The blue line is from the off spot to the stop. The yellow line is from the stop to the nose. The blue line is always slightly longer than the yellow line. This is important head proportion. The yellow line should not be longer or equal to the blue line. And the ear. Ear tip is almost on the line of the eye. But the, when the dog is relaxing, it's a little bit long. But when they focus on something or listening to something, the ear is getting a little bit up, higher, and a little bit going to the center. You can see the orange line. Now, blue line slightly longer than the yellow line. So this is a correct proportion head. So the next example, his name is Blue Cheese. So the same. Blue line is from the off spot to the stop. The ear line is from the stop to the nose. Blue line always should be slightly longer than the ear line. And ear is ear tip should be on the line of the eye corner. Can you see it? He has a beautiful head expression. He will be, he is nine years old, but this is my favorite dog. And his ear, top of the ear, 
is on the line of the scalp. And the right, well broaded scalp, very flat. Nice stop, strong under jaw, and well developed muscle line of the cheek. So, Blue line is slightly longer than the ear line. Can you see it? So next, this dog. I think this is a good example. From the occiput to the stop. Stop to the nose. Blue line always should be slightly longer than the ear line. Let's see. Yes, yellow line, blue line, blue line is uh, slightly longer than the yellow line. This is correct. So, is this a good example head? I'm so sorry, but not. That's because. So, his head proportion is correct. You will see correct. But the problem is his ear is too big. So now he's focused on something, but still his ear tip is much lower than the eye corner. See? I mean, the dog, most of the dog doesn't have a really a small compact ear like this, this point, but still this tip is almost reaching to the cheek is too too long, too big. And big and houndish ear is not acceptable. So this is the example of the wrong head expression. From the occiput to the stop. Blue line. From the stop to the nose. Yellow line. This always should be slightly longer than this. Let's see. All the same. 50-50. This is wrong. Sorry, Gelato. So, this is another wrong example of the ears. Her ear is definitely bigger and longer than the eye corner. See? Can you see it? So again, the big and houndish ear and the this ear set is lower than the skull. Skull level is this, but the high ear set is this. So this is a low ear set and a little bit big ear. This is wrong. The breed doesn't accept the big and houndish ear. Okay, so now. We, we saw some examples, long muzzle, correct muzzle, big ear, correct ear, and flat skull, and narrow skull or something. So, when you're judging, or when you see the Jack Russell Terrier, always remind, is the skull flat? Is the eye keen? Is the muzzle correct? Not too long? Or is the stop clean? Are the ears correct in set? No houndish ear, no elect ear. Please always remind. And now I show you one picture. These are little sisters. Same mother, same father, little sister. So which head is correct and why? Now you can answer it. This one is correct. More flat scar, 
Gurya said, uh, you cannot see this, the legs of the muzzle, but her muzzle is a slightly shorter than the, than the head. And this one, the wrong one, a little bit narrower, a little bit domey skull, and narrower muzzle. You can see it. So we have spoken about the head expression. So now we are going to speak about the body. The FCA breed standard. The back, level, the length from the withers to the root of the tail, slightly greater than the height from the withers to the ground. The Jacrocer Terrier doesn't have the proportion of the person Russell Terrier either, has not been too long, too long. There's something you cannot measure and you have to use the eye and see a good balance. The, this breed, the proportion is the key to understand the breed. Because some people through thinking they have to be too short in leg. And some people think they have to be long body. And then when you go to some European countries, they're a little bit taller. When you go to the Asian country, maybe they look a little bit shorty. But the breed standard is only one. So we have to think about the breed standard carefully. Loin, the loin should be short, strong and deeply muscled. Chest, chest deep rather than wide, with good clearance from the ground, enabling the brisket to be located at the height, midway between the ground and the withers. The rib should be well sprung from the spine, fluttering on the side so that the girls behind the elbow, the girls behind the elbow can be spanned by two hands. And here is about 40 to 43 centimeters. We have to put emphasis on chest deep rather than wide. This means that the girls behind the elbow can be spanned by two hands, two hands. Unfortunately, nowadays, there are many dogs who is very coarse and really heavy chest, and this is not possible because they cannot go into the foxhole. The KC breed standard, neck, strong and clean of sufficient length to carry the head proudly and to protect the feet when working below ground. Four quarters, shoulders, uh, were laid back with visible forechest and never heavily loaded with muscle. Upper arm of sufficient length with angulation to ensure elbows are set under the body. Were boned forelegs as straight as compatible with a short legged dog when viewed from front or side. Body, the length from the point of shoulder to the buttocks slightly greater than the height from the visas to the gland. Level back with very slight arch to loin, which is short, strong and well muscled. Chest oval, fairly deep, rather than wide, with good ground clearance. The distance from the visas to the elbow is equal to the distance from the elbow to the ground. Lip cage, oval were sprung, fluttering somewhat on the side so that the girls behind the elbow can be spanned by two hands about 40 to 43 centimeters and moderate taka. The first keyword, 50-50. It is important to remember that we are talking about a small dog, medium balanced, where proportioned, with us to the elbow, elbow to the ground, must be 50-50. Important rule, the 50-50 is very important. But sometimes our eye cannot be a computer and the live creature cannot be the perfect like a machine. So let's try to find almost, almost 50-50. It doesn't need a exactly 50-50, but almost 50-50 that which we have to look for. This one, 
45 to 46 centimeters. It's almost 50 50. Not exactly, but it's not like a 60 to 40 or 70 30. This one, 53 to 47. It's almost 50 50. This stock, 55 to 45. It's almost 50-50. It's not the, it's not like 50-50 exactly, but it's almost a 50-50. This is the key. Some dogs are getting too heavy in chest or coarser, coarser in body. This dog, 60-40. This dog 66 34. So if it's more than like a 60 40 70 30, it's too heavy. So I can show you some of the top winning dogs all over the world, which owner sent the picture to us. This one 53 to 47. This one 54 to 46. This one, 55 to 45. So it's almost 50-50. It's not exactly, but almost. My preference, my personal preference is, of course, the ideal is 50-50, but I would rather have a dog that is just a bit shorter in leg, such as 55% body and 45% leg, rather than a dog that is high on leg. High on leg, like sat, like thirty to seventy or forty to sixty. But within five percent, within five percent of the difference, this is my preference because a dog that is forty five percent body and fifty five percent leg has or can be a personal muscle terrier in a smaller dog, which is wrong. So now we're going to see the proportions with the real dogs. Let's do it. Okay, so let's do the proportion study. Example one, Lana. The green line, uh, this is a wizard's point, to the elbow. Elbow, and then elbow is the same point of the, the bottom of the chest. And the orange line is from the elbow to the ground. The, this green line and orange line ideally should be 50-50. And this, is a, this red line is the length of the body from the shoulder point to the buttocks. Let's see. First, is this dog 50-50? See, 50-50, same rings, same rings. So now the proportion, what I call ratio. The lead line from the shoulder point to the buttocks should be slightly longer than from the withers to the ground. Let's see. See slightly longer. So, this speech, 50-50 proportion, length of the body is slightly longer than the height. This speech has a correct proportion. The second dog, his name is Gatsby. I put the tape, green tape, from the wizards to the elbow. Elbow or the bottom of the chest. It should be the same and elbow to the ground. Let's see if the green and orange is 50-50 or not.
almost equal. 50-50. 50% and 50%. Orange and green, orange and green, it's the same, same rings. Next. So the next, body proportion. From the shoulder point to the buttocks. From the point of shoulder to the ground. Let's see. The leg should be slightly longer than the pink. See. The leg should be slightly longer than the pink. So he's a slightly longer body than the head. Good boy. So third example. She's miri miri. She's a smaller bit than the other two examples. But even the small dogs, if they have a correct proportion, it's a correct example. Let's see. The green line from the wizard to the elbow and the orange line, elbow to the ground. Let's see. It's not equal. That's not equal, but it's just, just a little shorter leg. Just a little. Not like too much. Maybe 55 to 45%. 55 to 40%. And then for me, this is acceptable. This is not like a 60% and a 40% or 70% and 30%. Within 5%, I would like to accept it. So now, we see this red line the, from the shoulder point to the buttocks should be slightly longer than the height, the pink. Let's see. This is from the wizards to the ground. Okay, so she's a little bit long, but she's a bitch. It's not the female, it's not a male. So little, the female can be a little bit longer than the males. Okay, now we are going to see some rope proportion. But this is very, very popular and common proportion you see everywhere in the world. But let's see. From the wizards to the elbow or the bottom of the chest, this line. And elbow to the ground. Is this 50-50 or not? Let's see. See, the orange is a lot of shorter than the green. It means this is not a 50-50, and this is not a 55-45. Maybe this is a 60-40, 60-40. So this, this type, I mean this style, is very popular all over the world. But when you're judging or when you're reading this read, let's think carefully. If it's a... 50-50 or 60-40 or 55 to 45. You can, use it, you can use this color tape and measure easily. So let's see the body length. The lead line from the shoulder point to the buttocks should be slightly longer than the height from the wizards to the ground. This is a wizard's point. Let's see. Again, this type is very, very common and popular all over the world. Maybe especially in the United States. But see, if this is a slightly or long, I think she's a little bit longer little bit long and a little bit shorter in leg. So the next example, Duffy again. The, in the beginning, 
we measured her and she was like almost 34.5 centimeters. She was very tall. And how about the proportion? The green from the wizard to the elbow. She is a little bit uh, higher in the bottom of the chest rather than the elbow point. So maybe it's a little bit like this. And from the elbow to the ground, let's see. Yeah, she has a long leg. She has a long leg. About this. So now, now, let's see her proportion of the length of the body. From the shoulder point to the buttocks, flat line, from the withers to the ground. <laughs> Equal. 50 50. It means she's square. Now I'm speaking about the rib cage. Rib cage is oval. Worst crown fracturing somewhat on the sides so that the girth, girth behind the elbow can be spanned by two hands. About 40 to 40 cent 43 centimeters. So two hands means not a lady's hand. Not my hand. My hand is small. So this say, this two hands means general Ingr Ing England man, British man, general man's hand. So let's see. I am Japanese. <laughs> see, you can see this dog easily can be spanned by general man's hand. So this dog is standable. Now many dogs, a lot of dogs, has a really heavy chest, which is wrong. They always have to be spanable. So let's think about the spanable. Why they have to be spanable? It's because they are the walking terrier, hunting terrier. They have to go into the little fox hole or smaller than smaller hole. To work in it, or work in it, and they have to be, they have to turn inside the hole, and then chase the little animals. So if they have the, the heavy chest or coarse chest, they cannot turn in it, in it. So this is how how they span inside the fox hole. This is the, my friend, our mentor Simon Mills told us a long time ago. Her nose can touch to her bottom of the tail. So that she can turn, she can turn, she can turn. We have been speaking about the body proportion on the breed standard, SGI and Kenefra. The body proportion is one of the most difficult and important part of this breed. And we have learned about the 50-50 from the wizards to the elbow elbow to the ground. It should be 50-50. Now, we have the second keyword. Slightly longer or marginally longer. The length from the point of shoulder to the buttocks should be slightly greater than the height from the withers to the ground. So, I am the Japanese language speaker. I'm not the English language speaker, so it has been a very difficult for me to understand the sentence of the marginally or slightly. So, which one is a slightly longer? This is square. This is like tangier. Is this uh, slightly or? This is rectangular. Is this slightly or even this? I don't think this is a slightly. But what is the how is the slightly 
or ha is imaginary. Because there is there is no um lat ratio ratio on the breed standard. Probably the other breed. For example, the dachshund on dachshund breed standard on the FCI set. The length of the body and the height it should be 10 to 17 or 18. Jackson has a, has a ratio on the brief standard, so it's easy. But the Jack Russell, what do you think? So I have measured some of the do some of dogs. Let's see. How about Jack Russells? This dog. This dog. Length of the body, from the shoulder point to the buttocks, from the withers to the ground, is 1 to 11. 11 and a little bit more. 1 to 11. So I did more because I really wanted to know the ratio of the, a lot of dogs, which we know all over the world. This dog, 10 to 11 and a half. This dog, 10 to 11 and a half. This dog, 10 to 12. This dog, 10 to 11 and a half. This one, 10 to 11 and a half. Many dogs have 10 to 11 to or 10 to 12. This one, probably, it's because of the picture angle, but in this picture, the ratio is 10 to 10. This one, 10 to 13. This one, 10 to 12 and a half. This one, 10 to 11 and a half. So, I can say, from the withers to the ground, and from the shoulder point to a buttocks. Uh, my, my, my preference of the ratio is 10 to 11, 10 to 12 and a half, maybe 10 to 13 is a little bit long, but probably 10 to 13, maybe the beach, which we can accept. So, there is a big difference, different sentence in the breed standard between the KC and the FCI and the ANKC statement. First, the ANKC and FCI says the body should be proportioned marginally longer than the toe, measuring slightly longer from the withers to the root of the tail, then from the withers to the ground, withers to the ground, here to here. The KC says the length from the point of shoulder to the buttocks slightly greater than the height from the wizards to the ground. So, FCI says from the wizards to the root of the tail. And uh, KC says from the shoulder to the buttocks. I think this is uh, quite different. This dog, from the point of shoulder to the buttocks, is, and this from the wizards to the ground, it's like 10 to 12 and a half. 10 to 12 and a half. But if we measure this point from the wizard's point to the root of the tail, if this dog longer than the height, slightly longer than the height, now, this dog should look like this. 10 to 12 and a half. 10 to 12 and a half. Can you see? If the distance from the wizards to the root of the tail should be longer than the height, the dog should look like this. One more. This dog, 10 to 12. Almost ideal 
Latio and proportion. If this is a shoulder point to the buttocks. But then, if we measure from the wizard's point to the root of the tail, if this blue line is slightly longer than the red line, this dog should look like this. What do you think? And in the other part, the British standards say the body, body, they don't say back, they say body, should be proportion marginally longer than the tall. So body, if they say body, then they have to say, maybe they better say body length instead of the back length. So this is the difference between the FCI brief standard and the KC standard. This is the, the one biggest proportion different on the statement. But anyway, we have we have learned we have learned we have learned the body proportion. Three important things, three important proportion keywords. One, 50-50 proportion. Two, slightly longer body. And three, standable. These three points on the proportion is the golden rule. He is not a square dog. Not too long, not too short, slightly longer body. And his proportion should be always be a 50-50, 50, like 50% 50, 50 body. The Jack Russell Terrier must be scannable because they are the working Terrier. They have to go into the foxhole. But one more thing, my hands is very small. So it's always have to be scannable by the general man's hand. Now, little bit, I am speaking about a little bit of my concern about this breed recently. One, first, too square, too short in body. They look too square. Two, too short leg. Looks like a Sealyham Terrier, or too long body, or too tall, over 31 centimeters on withers and cow hawk or to short upper arms and restricted movement or to long muzzle or to big ears. This is my concern about the breed. So when we think about this breed, we always have to look at the correct proportion. We always have to train our eyes to find out the good proportion in like a cookie shape. This is a wrong cookie shape. This is a correct cookie shape. This is a wrong one. Too, too high, too low, too long, too square. We always have to figure out which is a correct proportion. Medium balanced dog. Like this. You can you you always see which one is good, which one is wrong. Like this, you can see which one is good, which one is wrong, and why. There is some beautiful proportion dog, but you always have to you can you have to have a reason why this is correct or why this is wrong. We've been spending a lot of time for speaking about the proportions. It's because it's very important. But now I am going to speaking about the hindquarters. This is F Shabri standard. Um, it's very important to have a balance between the front and rear leg. The stifle will angulate it. And hock, hock joint, low set, and uh, Rear pastern parallel when viewed from a behind while in freestanding position parallel. Can you see it parallel. 
So it means it should not be like this, 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 this. It should be parallel. Hind feet, round, hard, padded, not large, tooth, moderately arched, tongue neither in no not. Never open, never open cat feet. Gait and movement, true, free and springy. Straight forward and back, fox parallel, fox parallel. So it should not. It should not be like a cow hawk. It should not be cow hawk. Or it should not be sickle hawk. And um, good reach and drive with correct extension. Springy movement must show effortless and fluidly, an extension trot, an extension trot. That's because this breed, sometimes they have to move with fox hand or horses if they didn't have, if they don't have a good reach and drive. Um, it's not workable. So this one understanding, but when, when this dog moves, she has enough reach and drive So the same sentence which Kennel Club Brief Standard says the hind quarters strong and muscular, angulation in balance with the shoulders, stifle were bent, stifle were bent with low set hocks, low set hocks. When standing, past and parallel when viewed from the behind. Viewed from the behind. View from the behind. It should not like this. Or oh, this, this. It should be para. And feet round to over, not large, with tools, moderately arched, cut firm. Tail, high set, thick and base. In overall, balance with the rest of the dog. When moving, the tail should be carried completely erect, but may drop at the rest. If dog's, dog's tail for the work, the tip of the tail on the label with the scalp. And gait, gait and movement, unrestricted. Free striding ground covering gait without exaggeration were coordinated. Straight action front and rear may, may converge slightly at a faster pace. Stride should be of good length, never stride or high stepped. Maybe they should they should not move like high step. Hindquarters providing plenty of drive. Hindquarters have to give uh, plenty of drive. I will show you the video of the dogs when they move. Let's see the video.
song about the movement. This breed has such a happy temperament, strong temperament. So some of them move from their good temperament instead of the structure. But it's not a true truth, true movement. It's like a happy movement, but it's not a true movement. My concern is too short upper arms and straight in the shoulder can make the short hopping step. Another concern is the too long of the too long too long high hawk or the cow hawk. A lot of them has a cow hawk problem. So if you see the movement of the Jack Russell Terrier, please see the movement from the structure, not the movement from the temperament. Now I am speaking about the coat. The coat, the Jack Russell Terrier, has a three different type of coat. One is a rough coat, long one, and second one is a broken coat, like this, and third is a smooth coat. We have a three kinds of different coat, but three of them must be weatherproof and not over trimmed. And the color. This is a quite little terrier with a medium length of body. Then, white color must predominate with black and or the tan or the tricolor marking. The tan markings may range from the light tan to the rich chest tan. The white must be 51% rather than the other color. And the size. 25, 25 centimeters to the 30 centimeters at the point of the withers. And fourth, any departure from the foregoing point should be considered a fault, and the seriousness with which the fault should be regarded should be in the exact proportion to its degree and its effect upon the health and welfare of the dogs and on the dog's ability to perform its traditional work. So any any fault which can cause which can prevent their hunting work can be a fault. So now I am speaking about the coat. They have smooth coat, broken coat, and rough coat body. They have smooth coat, broken coat, and rough coat. Three types of coat all should be weatherproof. So they have a three kind of coat, but um, soft linty coat are objectionable, objectionable and should be considered a serious fault as they are very hard to breed out. The soft coat, if you, once you have, once you get, it's not easy to breed out. So we have to be very careful about the coat texture. So what I do is using the smooth coat or like this light broken um, one time in three generations. I don't want to breed the rough coat to rough coat often and often and often. It destroys the coat texture. So even if I don't have a really a spectacular smooth, but still I keep a smooth coat because I need it to keep a good texture of coat. So coat, the hair may be smooth or broken or rough. Every, every kind of coat should be a weatherproof. It's not only the waterproof, it's a weatherproof. And then it should be harsh and too much using the thinning scissor or scissors destroy the texture of the harsh coat. It can, if you're using more and more often the, the scissors, the coat will be softer and softer. So the exhibitors and also the judges must be very, very careful about you using the thinning scissor or using the scissor or judging the dog, which is is being being trimmed by scissor. For me, if the dog 
crypt or for me if the dog is using too much scissors I cannot give her excellent glade because the cold texture can affect their walking ability and this is a terrier breed hard and harsh weatherproof coat is a very important I will explain about the three kind of coat. This is a broken coat. He doesn't have a really a long, big fur things. He has a little bit, but it's not much. And he has some whisker, but it's not like a big, fluffy, soft coat. All his hair is so harsh, strong, and then he has enough undercoat. So this is a very harsh harsh coat. So even like a I put a lot of water but the water will not go inside. It's like weatherproof and waterproof. Okay. So this is a spruce coat. She doesn't have any farm things. Very straight short hair but it's not like a too soft short coat this coat also very harsh and this is the same texture of the smooth fox yeah yeah and she doesn't have a whisker a lot of whisker she's a smooth coat this is a rough coat he has a, a lot of funny things. A lot of funny things. He has uh, funny things on the leg and uh, funny things in the whisker on the face. But we would never using the thinning scissor to fluff it up. Always have to comb, comb it down because fluffy funny things would. Um, would prevent the idea of working. And even a rough coat, this top coat should be the weatherproof, harsh and harsh top coat and the undercoat to protect the skin and the body. If the coat is so soft, fluffy, Hello. Hello. The water should go inside the, the skin easily. But this is a harsh coat, so it's just wipe it. That's it. This is a good harsh coat. And this is a rough coat. So my concern about the coat after traveling worldwide to see this breed is too much using thinning scissor to sculpture and then it causes too soft coat and too much needless furnishings and too much furnishings under the chest and the lacking of the weatherproof texture. These are my concern about the, the coat texture. So yeah, it's easy to sculpture the dog by the thinning scissor or the scissor, but please remember that it destroy the harsh coat. And then without harsh coat, they cannot be functional. So, did you enjoy? Now, are you start understanding this breed? Like, like a skeleton, 50-50, or slightly longer than the height, or the slight longer here, or the tail set, or the low hawk, your eye got more training through this online seminar. So, I want to remind you some of the points. We must always remember the golden rule of the Jack Russell Terrier. Height on the wizards, 25 centimeters to the 30 centimeters. And the balance, which is given by the 50% leg and 50% body, 
and medium balanced tail, and slightly, not too long, not too short in body, and chest circumference not over 43 centimeters, not too heavy in chest. They should be spanable. Spanable. Every detail written in the breed standard should be to fit for the function. Because this is a working terrier. This is a working hunting little terrier. So, too fluffy hair, too heavy chest, everything which can bother their working would not be acceptable. Also the color. If they have a too, too dark color, more than 51%, then some, some hunters probably misunderstand it from the distance if it is a fox or wild animal or the white terrier. So this is the, the reason why they have to be white predominant. The everything, everything, not fancy, not fashion, just functional. This is a working terrier without a correct proportion and without a correct structure, without a correct coat texture, or they cannot be a functional. So when you see the, a lot of dogs, especially the Jack Russell Terrier entry in Europe is quite huge. First, first, when you have to see the proportions, 50-50 or medium balanced or the slightly longer, first, you have to see the you have to separate the dogs by the proportion. Second, you can see the head expression, ears, head proportion, eye shape, muzzle. You can see the head expression. And the third, movement. You can see the, the reach and drive, free, free movement, free gait. And their temperament is like the best temperament for me. For the, I mean, they, they have they are the good good working terrier, but also they can get along with other Jack Russell or the kids or the cat or other big dogs, small dogs. They are very very happy dogs. Through the first chapter, we have learned about the breed standard proportion movement, head shape, and hindquarters, color, and coat, everything on the breed standard. Because without learning the breed standard, we cannot train the dog, we cannot show the dog, we cannot breed the dog. So, I hope that presentation would help you to understand this breed. And then the second chapter, Hiroshi is going to do the grooming lecture. はい。なんか言ってよ。飲んで、はい。いいかな。いい。よし。じゃあそれで。はい。So, see you. See you soon. See you on the second chapter. Bye bye. Bye. Stay home.